When you open Movie Maker 2.6 for the first time, it's going to look something like this. Over on the left, it's going to have this bar that says Movie Tasks. We want to change that to Collections. So click on this button here to change that to Collections. At the bottom, we see the storyboard. The storyboard can be useful, but we need to switch this to the timeline. So click Show Timeline. The reason is that the timeline allows you to add an extra audio track for your voiceover. This is the preview pane. This is where you'll see your movie while you're editing it together. And note that all of these panes are resizable. If you're not happy with the way that this looks, you can get more space to work here by clicking and dragging on this blue bar. If you want to see a bigger preview, you can do this. You shouldn't need any more space over here, but if you do, that's resizable as well. Now we need to import all of our media into Windows Movie Maker in order to begin creating our digital story. The easiest way to do this is to open the folder where all of your items are and to drag and drop them into the collections pane. It's easiest to select multiple things and drag and drop all of them at once. It creates extra collections for video files. If you want everything in the same collection, you can drag and drop the video files onto the collections collection and everything will be in the same one. The next step is to start bringing your media onto the track. It's best to start with your voiceover, that way you have something to edit to. Click, drag, and drop onto the audio and music track. Now our voiceover is on that track. Then we can start bringing our pictures and videos to match to the voiceover. It's the same process. Click, drag, and drop. Let's say I wanted this picture first and not this picture. All I have to do is click, drag, and pull to the left of this picture until a blue bar appears up and down, and then release. Maybe I want this picture to last longer. Hover your mouse over the right edge, click and drag for the duration that you want it to last. Please note that if you change something that has pictures after it, it will also extend where those pictures begin. It's important to keep track of your timing so that you don't have to go back and fix everything after you've made one small adjustment to something near the beginning of your picture. While you're working on your video, make sure you save it very frequently. There's a little save disk icon here. You can click that and it'll save. If you want to save it with a different name, go to File, Save Project As, select where you want to save it and what you want it to be called, and then save it. You may want to get in the habit of simply pressing Control plus S every time you want to save the project. It's a really quick way to save your project and prevent a lot of heartache down the road. Now let's do some basic video editing. This is a video clip. Let's click and drag it onto our timeline. If you want this clip to end sooner than it does, you can use the same method for extending or reducing the length of a picture to trim the video clip. Now our video clip cuts off shorter. If you want to cut off some of the beginning, you can do the same from the left side. If you want to return it to the entire duration, just click and drag it out the whole way. Sometimes you might want to split a video clip in half to use the pieces somewhere else. This is called the current time indicator. It indicates where the time is currently. If you click and drag that to the middle of your video, 
You then have the option of clicking here to split the clip into two clips. These clips now can be treated as individual clips and rearranged accordingly. Now let's say after all that hard work, we don't want the clip split where it is. It's okay to right click and delete things off of the timeline. It's not going to erase it from your computer or from your collections unless you right click and delete from collections. And doing that will not erase it from your computer. So after we've right clicked and deleted those things, we can simply drag the clip back onto the timeline. Now, by default, Microsoft Movie Maker is only going to use a hard cut when it switches from one clip to the next. This is where the storyboard mode comes in handy. Let's switch back by either pressing Ctrl T or clicking the button. These spaces between the images are spaces for transitions. We can browse our transitions by clicking underneath collections. Let's put a fade between those two pictures. We click and drag onto the box between the two pictures. Then if we watch, it will fade. There are lots of transitions that you can explore. And if you're unhappy with the transitions that you've selected, you can simply right click and delete. Or select it and just press delete. The storyboard mode is also useful to apply video effects. This little star at the corner of each of these clips is the video effects star. So we'll click on video effects and you can browse those like you browse the transitions. If we want something to look old fashioned we can put a sepia tone. You just click and drag onto that star. Now my picture has a nice sepia tone. Once we have all of our transitions here on the storyboard mode, click on Show Timeline and you'll see all the work that it saved for you. Expand this little box next to the video track. You can see here that there are transitions added onto this timeline. Now, since you are mixing video clips with still pictures that have no sound, you want to pay attention to the volume levels of the video clips, especially because your voiceover will be playing. Give yourself a little more space here by dragging this up. Then expand this box here. Click there. And you see that you have an audio track tied to your... Right click on the audio track. And hit volume. Then you can adjust the volume level so it won't interfere with your voiceover. There are a couple of buttons on the timeline that you may find helpful. You can play your timeline, which will go through the video and preview it. You can pause that by pressing the same button. If you want to return to the beginning of your video, you can click Rewind Timeline. If you want to make every clip look bigger on the timeline so that it is easier to edit without changing their duration, you can click this. This is the Zoom Timeline In button. You can return to a smaller view with the Zoom Timeline Out button. You may have recorded your voiceover already in a different program, but if you made a video and needed to provide a voiceover on the spot, there's a Narrate Timeline option. And finally, you have an audio mixer. You can click that, and you can mix the audio from your video tracks and the audio slash music track. Now let's add a title to the movie. Say I want my title to show up right on this picture of the statue. What I can do is click on that picture and then we're going to go up to tasks which will take us back to this movie tasks. Click make titles or credits underneath the edit movie. And to get a title directly on this picture, we're going to click Add Title on the selected clip in the timeline. Type in your title and preview it over here. Right now, it's just fading in and very basic. You can change the text font and color here by going through all of these options. If you don't want it to fade in like that, you can click Change the Title Animation 
and find an appropriate animation for your video. When you're ready to add it to the movie, click Done, Add Title to Movie. Now you can see that it appeared here in the timeline and you can extend the duration the same way as all of our other clips. If you want your title to occupy its very own clip, go back to Make Titles or Credits and explore these other options. You can add a title at the beginning of the movie, but bear in mind that that is going to shift the timeline. You need to make sure it doesn't mess up your timing. It's best to add a title before you even arrange your clips. You also have the option to add credits at the very end of the movie, or add a title after the selected clip, or add a title before the selected clip. Titles are also very useful for something else. A lot of people who make digital stories like to include some blank space between the pictures when they want to drive home a certain point or give a certain tone to their piece. Movie Maker doesn't come with a simple way to add blank space to your movie. So you have to sort of work around that with a title. And here's how you do that. Let's click add a title after the selected clip and put in one single space. The default color is going to be blue for the title background, so you'll need to change the text font and color. I've already done that, but that's where you click to do that. Once you're ready to add that to your movie, just click Done, Add Title to Movie, and you can extend the duration of that blank space or shorten it. You can also rearrange it anywhere you want, and that's how you add blank space to your movie. When you think your movie is just about done and ready to be published, you can save your movie as a movie file. Underneath File, click Save Movie File. My computer is OK. Click Next. Enter in a title. Choose a place to save it. Click Next. And best quality for playback on my computer is an OK setting, but if you want to explore other settings, they are there and available. It's best to just leave it on this though. Click Next and it will save. This part might take a while, but when it is done, you can go to that destination and view your video.